California rapper was killed when six police officers opened fire on him after they found him asleep at the wheel of his car in a Taco Bell drive through line. Willie McCoy, also known as Willie Bo, was shot dead by officers from the Vallejo Police Department after they responded to a 911 call from a Taco Bell employee. According to the report, all six police officers were forced to fire multiple rounds on McCoy. When startled, he quickly reached for his 40 caliber semi-automatic gun with an extended magazine. To license it. Random radio special report. Um, yeah. Um, we had a situation that happened over the weekend. Actually, not over the weekend, a couple, about a week ago. Um, young African American brother in California, in the Vallejo area, named Willie McCoy. He's a rapper, he goes by the name of Willie Bo. Made music like this. I'm buying guns, tucking cheese just for the drought. Niggas wanna be for us so they could get some clout. Out of state, ducked off on the paper, while a baby fuck with me and come and see what this paper about. Catch me out of state in a mansion by the lake. Foreign bitches cater to me, walk up on me, bring me cake. If the bitch don't hand enough, bro, ho, get out my face. It's a banner choosing fee. If you tryna fuck with me, I got game from my OG. Told me think before I speak. Only real could fuck with me on the half of FBG. I say loyal to my team, we keep it lit for the green. Free bookie out the gym so we can finish off the dream. Game. Baby, fuck with me because you know I'm on the paper route. These niggas speaking on us, all I do is give a nigga clout. We coming through these hundreds, throw that straight into the bank. Money make no problem, so we solve it with a larger mouth. Mm -hmm. Easily could have been an artist on Random Radio. I, I think we're gonna play that video for him uh, on the video show this week. Just, just in remembrance. Rest in peace to Mr. Willie McCoy, showing underground artists some love that we didn't even know about. But easily could have been one of you guys out there who's listening right now. One of you guys who sends your music in. Uh, Willie McCoy was shot in California. Uh, and the people are outraged. Uh, here's the news telling us some of what happened. Now on Nightbeat, a deadly shooting in a drive-thru. Vallejo police opened fire, killing a young Bay Area musician. This all happened at around 10.30 last night at the Taco Bell on Admiral Callahan Lane in Vallejo, just east of I-80. And Ken, throughout the evening, we've been watching as folks have been paying their respects to this 20-year-old man who arrived here at the Taco Bell last night and was asleep apparently in this drive through lane when police ended up shooting him to death. Willie Bo McCoy, age 20, was a musician, a rapper with talent, but late Saturday night, family members say Willie Bo was shot to death by Vallejo police after he had apparently fallen asleep in the drive through lane of the Taco Bell. According to a press release from the Vallejo Police Department, officers were doing a welfare check on a driver who was slumped over. Police say the driver was unresponsive with a gun on his lap the vehicle was locked and the transmission was still in drive. After blocking the car's exits, officers report the driver began to move. They say they told him to keep his hands visible, but that he quickly reached for the handgun on his lap. Police opened fire, they say, in fear for their lives. My little brother was just shot for no reason. Willie Bo's older brother believes police acted too quickly and probably surprised the young man. If I wake you up, if I knock on your front door and da 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 da, you're gonna jump off the, off the bed like who the hell is? You know what I mean? Why wouldn't you be safe yourself while you wake him up and then driver exit the car? I mean that's all it is. Okay, now if he exits the car shooting, I, I I'm not. I understand. I, I have to chalk that up. A police say they're still in the middle of a thorough investigation. They are asking for witnesses to come forward and anybody who might have evidence, especially video. Okay. So, what we have is we have a young man sleep, I mean, really knocked out sleep, in his car at a Taco Bell drive through. Um, and I. I've, I've got some questions, some, some strange behavior here that I'm not understanding. But I, I'm going to get to that in a moment. Let me just tell you the story. So we, got, we, got, we got James Willie McCoy who's hanging out. At, he's not hanging out. He fell asleep behind the wheel of his car. He's still in drive. 
at the Taco Bell drive-thru and when he wakes up he uh, sees the police around him, reaches for his gun and they shoot him a bunch of times. We actually have footage of this. Let's take a look at this. Yo, that's like seven cops out here. They just blocked the drive-thru. The guy over there doesn't want to come out. I don't know why. Dude. Holy. Dude. Dude, they just fired on that guy. All right. I don't understand. There's a cop at the end of the shooting that says, put your hands up. Did you guys think that he was alive? He was going to say, oh, let me put him up. Yeah. Now, you guys know me. I am usually a, a, the, a person who defends the police, and I usually defend their actions, and I usually say, why are you guys doing this? And, what, and I usually ask the blacks, why are you doing what you're doing? I'm, I have to ask the same question here. So I have two ways of looking at this. I look at this from one perspective, right? Let's take a look at it from the police's, the police's, the police perspective. The law enforcement's perspective is we have a young man sleep in the car. And they noticed that he had a weapon on him in his lap. They... I don't understand why they didn't immediately try to wake him up, but I'm assuming they didn't want to wake him up just in case he reached for the gun and then shot him or if this was a hoax or whatnot. So I understand that. So the law enforcement, when he finally wakes up, he reaches for his gun and they shoot at him a bunch of times saying that he was that their lives were threatened. Now, I, I look at it like this. Law enforcement does not know. If you have a gun sitting on your lap, they don't know if that gun is loaded. They don't know what you're going to do. You might shoot one of these cops. You might. You might. It's very possible. Um, if we look in you know, California, there are a lot of murder shootings that happen. It's mostly black African-American assailants, young guys. So, I mean, I understand it from the police perspective. You got to put these people down, especially if you see the weapon. And there is a weapon here. Um, now, from Willie James McCoy's perspective, now I don't know what Willie, maybe Willie was at his job. Maybe Willie was working hard on a video, he was in the studio all night. Maybe he was going to get something to eat and he fell asleep waiting, right? Taco Bell is usually open late, so maybe a bunch of people were there. Uh, in the process of that, he was knocked out so hard, maybe Willie didn't even, maybe he pulled the gun out. <sighs> For what though, Willie? Maybe, maybe Willie pulled the gun out to move the gun or something. Or maybe he was admiring the gun. And he happened to fall asleep. He fell on his lap and then next thing you know, Willie wakes up, sees a bunch of police, sees a bunch of lights, reaches for the gun to actually move the gun, maybe put it in the passenger seat, and he got lit up. I'm curious to know this. Why did Taco, why did the Taco Bell employees call the police? Why don't we know what happened to them prior to them calling the police? Why don't we, why did, did they try to wake Willie up? Was he, un, was he unresponsive? Did they think Willie was dead? Did they think Willie was no longer with us and that's why they called the police? But what is, why did they call the police instead of trying to wake Willie up? Did they also notice the gun? Is that what they told the police? There's a man here with a gun in the drive through who's sleep. He appears to be asleep or either dead. I would love to know what happened. I'm curious to know why CNN and all of them are not talking about it. I think I know why. I think I know why they're not talking about it because he has a gun in his lap. However, we still have a problem here. I mean, he was shot a bunch of times by the police. So that's a problem, right? Isn't that a little bit excessive? Did you did you see the footage? Show, show the footage again. Yo, there's like seven cops out here. They just blocked the drive through the guy over there doesn't want to come out. I don't know why. Dude. Holy. Dude.
Dude, they just fired on that guy. Yeah, that's a lot of bullets. That's a lot of bullets, okay? I mean, that's a lot of bullets. We just had this happen here in Chicago. Laquan McDonald was shot a bunch of times by Officer Jason Van Dyke, who got some news about him that I, I don't like. But either way, um, he shot him a bunch of times, and there was all this outcry because they claimed he didn't have a weapon, but he did. He had a knife. So this young man, I guess he's not getting Willie Bo, is not getting all the respect. Is not getting the news coverage simply because he did have a gun. I mean, look, I'll be the first one to tell you he's wrong for having the gun, right? The police, if he reached for the gun, then an officer should have shot him. But did you, did you see how many times they shot him? I mean, that's a bit much. That's a bit much. That's a bit much. The officers released this footage as they talked about what happened. I'm Andrew Badu, the police chief. Standing next to me is Sergeant Jeff Ty. This is the first time we've linked a video to a press release. This is something new for us, but we're trying to get timely and accurate information out to our community. First and foremost, it's not lost on me or any member of our department that we're discussing a loss of life. Our condolences and prayers go out to the family of the deceased. Sergeant Jeff Ty will give the latest update on the information and facts of this case. Good morning. Thank you, Chief Badu. My name is Sergeant Jeff Ty, and I am with the Community Engagement Office of the Vallejo Police Department. We wanted to take a moment to provide you with more details in regards to the officer-involved shooting that occurred on February 9, 2019, at Taco Bell. Two uniform patrol officers responded to Taco Bell, and upon their arrival, they noticed the vehicle, a gray Mercedes, was parked in the drive-thru, and the driver was unresponsive. As the officers got closer to the vehicle, they noticed that the driver had a handgun on his lap. The officers did not attempt to wake the driver and requested additional officers and resources to respond to the scene. As additional officers arrived on scene, they came up with a plan to have one officer open the door while the officer, another officer retrieved the firearm and the other officer would uh, monitor the movements of the driver at that point. The officers were faced with the challenge that the vehicle was locked and they were unable to get into the vehicle. The officers also noticed that the vehicle was in drive. At this time, they requested additional resources to include a patrol supervisor to respond to the scene. They began to move two marked patrol vehicles, one to the front and one to the rear of the gray Mercedes in an attempt to block the vehicle from making any erratic forward or backwards movement. While they were getting the vehicles into position, the driver began to become alert. The driver looked at the officers. The officers began to yell commands to include, keep your hands up, show me your hands. The driver suddenly reached down for the firearm. And at this point, six officers fired the duty weapons at the driver. Once the gunfire ceased, the, one of the officers reached in through the broken driver's side window unlocked the door and remove, opened, the, opened the door, removing the driver. The officers on scene provided life-saving measures in an attempt to save the driver's life. However, the driver succumbed to his injuries. At this time, we are working closely with the Solano County District Attorney's Office to gather more information in regards to this incident. We are also waiting for the Solano County, Cor Solano County Sheriff's Office Coroner's Report. When we receive that report, we'll have more information in regards to the driver's toxicology, as well as how many times the driver was struck by gunfire. We encourage anybody with any more information to please contact the Vallejo Police Department and speak to Detective Scott Yates or Detective Craig Long. So I guess what, what I'm saying here is this. More is gonna come out about this. We're gonna learn more about this as, as the days go on. This just happened about a week ago. So we're gonna learn more, but I do think that the, the, the police were excessive in the shooting of him. I mean, one shot could have been enough. And even if all the officers took one shot, that would have been enough. Willie, man, you know, to Willie's family, I mean, we gotta ask the question, why did Willie have this gun in his lap? 
What was Willie doing that he fell asleep so hard? But ne never mind that. Why you got the gun in your lap, Willie? See, that's that's another problem. Forget his music. I don't care what his music is about. There are tons of guys who rap about stuff and they're not doing it. I don't care. Willie, why you got the gun in your lap, brother? I also don't want to forget my Jason Van Dyke news. Before we go, Jason Van Dyke, who shot Laquan McDonald, was transferred to a, a jail in uh, Connecticut where he was beat up. Breaking right now, Jason Van Dyke's wife and attorney unleash their anger at Illinois prison officials. At this minute, they are talking about the disgraced officers beating in jail. Let's get right to CBS 2's Mike Puccinelli to explain why Van Dyke was in a Connecticut prison. Good morning, Mike. Hi, that's right. He was moved from here to Danbury, Connecticut. Now, Tiffany Van Dyke and Dan Herbert are now demanding to know why the former cop was moved from Illinois to a prison about 50 miles outside of New York City. I cannot and will not stand by somebody hurting my husband, hurting my family more than we've already been hurt. We are done being hurt. He was beaten inside his cell, and they say the beating happened just four hours after Van Dyke was placed in the minimum security facility's general population. Herbert says that should never have happened. Van Dyke says he was attacked on February 7th. An employee of the prison also anonymously called Herbert's office expressing concern for the safety of Van Dyke. The 40-year-old former cop was sentenced to seven years after he was convicted of second-degree murder in the 2014 death of Laquan McDonald. With time served and good behavior factored in, he could be out in three. Van Dyke shot McDonald 16 times after he says the 17-year-old ward of the state came at him with a knife. The Chicago Fraternal Order of Police expressed concern about the former officer's safety and promised to continue working to make sure he's protected. Tiffany Van Dyke says her family is petrified. She says putting her husband in general population was almost like leading a lamb to slaughter. She says her husband could easily have been killed. I cannot bury my husband. I am calling on the governor... I'm calling on the Attorney General. I'm calling on all of the officials within the state and federal prison system to let me know. I'm demanding reasons. I'm demanding answers as to why they took my husband from a state facility and put him in a federal facility. Now, earlier in the week, the Illinois Attorney General and the special prosecutor petitioned the state Supreme Court to try and resentence Van Dyke in the hopes that he'll get a longer prison sentence. Tiffany Van Dyke was asked about that, and she said it's frustrating and sickening. I don't know why he was transferred to a jail in Connecticut from where he was here in Illinois, but he was transferred to a jail in Connecticut where he was beat up by other inmates. This is going to happen to him. He's a former cop. He's being broadcasted around as a racist who hates blacks, who shot a, a black boy who was doing nothing. Though Laquan McDonald was breaking into cars. The whole reason the police were out there was because Laquan McDonald was breaking into cars. They're beating him up. The attorney general here wants to change, appeal his 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 years in jail and he wants to give him more Man. I mean honestly let's look at some cause and effect cause Laquan McDonald was out there breaking into innocent people's cars the effect was the police were called cause he was walking down the street and he obviously had a knife on him the effect was the police withdrew their weapons and cause he failed to comply the effect was he was shot because he also had a weapon on him you do remember that right now was he shot too many times sure definitely was it excessive definitely i said the same thing about the rodney king beating once he was on the ground was it excessive hell yeah you guys went too far Are we forgetting the cause and effect? None of this would have happened if Laquan McDonald wasn't breaking into cars. This is... Alright, either way. <laughs> Whatever. He's getting beat. He'll probably die in jail. Are you black people happy? You feel good about yourselves now? Yay? We killed the white person? 
a white man pat yourselves on the back you guys leave some messages in the comment section tell me what you think I don't know we'll be doing some follow ups on this we're gonna have to cause we don't know any details yet yeah, you are listening to Rob